I have come to the conclusion that I actually don't like Thanksgiving food. <laughs> share with you a bunch of Thanksgiving meal ideas that you can use in your own home. I'll make sure to add the prices. Well, at least my prices, of course, prices are different all over the world, but it'll give you a general direction when it comes to cheap, easy, and budget-friendly sides. And I'll also make sure to link all the recipes down below in my blog, and I'm going to include them in this entire video. So you're just going to get a lot. Now, originally I was going to do a full Thanksgiving dinner, but I gotta be honest, I don't have time. <laughs> So I'm gonna play around with a few recipes that I want to make for our personal Thanksgiving and share them with you. Plus I'll add a couple more ideas that I had and leave them in blog posts down below so you have some you know, ideas to play along with for your Thanksgiving as well. I'm also going to do the entire cleanup process with you and clean my house today because these are all things that need to get done. I thought, you know what, maybe I'll motivate you guys in your own housekeeping as well because we all need a little bit of motivation and inspiration here or there. So you can pop me up maybe on your phone, on your Google Play or on your TV and hang out with me as you're doing your work today too. As a self-taught bread maker, and someone who often tells my viewers, I love making bread. I literally love making bread. I love squishing it and mixing it and playing with it. I just love the process of bread making. I've never made dinner rolls, which is crazy to me. So that's what I had to do. Instead of doing a loaf of bread, I made dinner rolls. This one's super easy. You can omit the butter altogether. I am cooking with butter today for a couple of reasons. One is Thanksgiving. Why not? Plus I'm testing these recipes out that I'm gonna cook for other people. The second reason is, unfortunately, my husband had a softball accident a couple nights ago and he needs more calories in his diet because for about two weeks, he's gonna be on a mushy food diet. He's not even gonna eat these dinner rolls, but I'm gonna send him with him to work because they are regular flour. I usually eat gluten-free. So I decided to put butter in most of these recipes because then he can what he can eat the calories are higher. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, this is a very, very simple recipe. I decided to go the rustic roll look. So when you see my rolls, they're not beautiful, but man, do they smell good. And my husband did have a couple of tiny little bites, like <laughs> ever smallest bites. And he's like, babe, these are a hit. So it's a five and a half cups of flour and a little bit of butter little bit of sugar, get that yeast going, and these are gonna make your kitchen smell so good. So they do have to proof two times. The first time in a large proof, and then you're gonna roll them into balls, and they're gonna proof again for 30 minutes. If you've never made your own dinner rolls, this is a great recipe to start with because it's really, really easy. What I do when I'm looking for recipes is I scour Pinterest. I look all over Pinterest, and then I basically eliminate all the expensive parts of the recipes because you guys ever notice that on Pinterest? I mean, oh my gosh, there's like 75 ingredients and you're like, why are there so many ingredients when you could literally do this in five? So I eliminate most of the ingredients and then play around with the recipe. And sometimes I share with you guys recipes that fail. This one, thank goodness, was not a fail. So it's drier here than maybe most climates. So that is another thing to remember when you are bread baking, especially if you haven't bread baked before, you're kind of looking for a specific look or a texture, and it's gonna be kind of like a fluffy Play-Doh. I could literally over knead my bread all day because I love to knead it. Maybe one day I'll just make some and de-stress by rolling it out. I made cinnamon rolls the other day. It was like the best activity in the world for de-stressing. Anywho. Let this sit for about 30 minutes back into the mixing bowl that you mixed it in. You don't need a fancy mixer. You can just use a spoon or a spatula and your hands. Those are the best utensils in the world. As you can see, after 30 minutes, it blew up so big. And then I'm going to pop it and kind of knead it a little bit more and then roll it into a bunch of little rolls. 
have I told you that this smelled good yet? Because oh, there's something about yeasty bread that just smells so good. So because these dinner rolls are basically the same ingredients as every other dough that I make, I have all these things usually on hand. I was out of flour because I made cinnamon rolls last weekend for my husband's work, but these are really inexpensive. And I am going to share the total cost of my little grocery haul that you saw in the intro and the total cost of each individual item that I'm making with each recipe today to hopefully give you guys some inspiration in case you are looking for more budget-friendly options when it comes to your own Thanksgiving. these into little rustic rolls. You can tuck them and make them look really, really beautiful and have like the most aesthetic, perfect rolls. But welcome to my kitchen where I like rustic. I don't really care for aesthetic. I don't mind if things are messy because that's real life. I don't love following the bloggers that have like the perfect things because that's not me. That's not what I take the time for. And I think there's something really beautiful about rustic food. So hi, welcome to my kitchen in case you're new here. I like things that are a little bit messy. I think it just shares that were real people. And ooh, did you see what else was in the oven there? So here are my dinner rolls. And alongside that, I decided to make a roasted garlic butter. And I'm also gonna share that recipe with you because I feel like it's a necessary thing to have butter for Thanksgiving. I literally don't cook or eat oil or butters <laughs> the rest of the year. But like I said, my family that I'm making this for, they're gonna appreciate that on the side. So I took three bulbs of garlic and garlic was super inexpensive at the store today and I decided to go ahead and roast it. I've been playing around with the time and temperature of my roasting of the garlic because one time I made it, it just wasn't, I wasn't a fan. I cut off the wrong side of the bulb. I cooked it for too long. It just didn't work out. But recently I have found the perfect mix. So I take a little bit of Pam olive oil spray because you don't want your garlic bulb to stick to your aluminum foil and a little bit of sea salt. Wrap it up. I like to put it in a glass baking dish, put it in my oven 425 for about 35 minutes and it's perfect. I go ahead and let it sit once it comes out of the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes before I touch it so it's not burning my fingers to death and it squeezes out like perfection. Look at that garlic squeeze. You get so much flavor. If you are looking to do your own garlic, I'm actually thinking about doing my own garlic paste instead of buying minced garlic and just getting a bunch of bulbs, roasting it, squeezing it, and then putting it in the freezer. So if I decide to do that, I will make sure to add it to a video so you guys have that recipe. And then I'll share with you the butter that I have here in a little bit when we're making the mashed potatoes. But I found a new to us vegan butter that was in the store. It had like a sign next to it said, this is new, you know? And I decided to give it a try just so we could see what we thought of it. And three bulbs of garlic might seem like a lot, but I think it was perfect. Mix it up, 
put a little parsley on top so you have a little bit of greenery so it's not so yellow <laughs> it looks beautiful you can pop this in the refrigerator or you can leave it out so it's nice and soft to put on your dinner rolls but i highly recommend giving this one a try especially if you are going to a thanksgiving where not everyone is plant-based so you can introduce them to a new butter that they're really really gonna love okay moving on to cutting my potatoes anyone else think potatoes are the best part about any meal <laughs> so i'm just gonna cube and chop these nothing special just making a very simple mashed potato with a really good gravy. And I'm actually cooking with butter today because it's Thanksgiving and my husband loves butter. So I found a new vegan butter at the store and I thought I would give it a try. I am on my way, I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing yeah isn't that amazing in christmas times we'll be chilling and happy i have shared my potato recipe here a few times and sometimes i use milk sometimes i don't a lot of times i just use the starchy water from the potatoes themselves so i let them come to a boil boil them for 12 minutes go ahead and whip them up you can either use a little bit of the starchy water and milk or just the starchy water from the potatoes, completely up to you. I've been doing a combination of both. And after I whipped these up, I was like, ooh, I should have got another bulb of garlic to put in with the potatoes. How good would that have been? I didn't add any butter to those, but I do have butter extra or that garlic butter my husband could put on top. So he has a little bit more calories in his mushy food diet. So I also decided to do a gravy because he definitely can do a gravy this week. If I already say this, we're eating these meals throughout the week. So I'm not a huge fan of Thanksgiving food like flavors. I don't really like sage. I don't really like stuffing. I don't like green bean casserole. I don't think I like sweet potato casserole. Maybe I'm making it wrong. Maybe I've had the wrong kind. So <laughs> my Thanksgiving dishes, my favorite things, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberry sauce. That's what I would fill my plate with and uh, dinner rolls. <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on to some gravy here. It's mushroom gravy. I bought my mushrooms in bulk. I bought a pound of mushrooms for $3.99. I love when I can find mushrooms in bulk. And then a small little onion, which I had in the refrigerator that wasn't in my grocery haul. I went ahead and did add some butter. Now you can do this two ways. You can add your onions and your mushrooms and then add your flour and kind of make a roux. But I like to add that in at the end because I get a much glossier gravy and I think it thickens up and it just works better for me without burning my flour. So I go ahead and add some salt and some garlic. You're never too far from garlic and salt in my house. Have you guys noticed that? I don't need any other seasonings. I use them, but I don't need them. And about three quarters of a cup of veggie broth. I go ahead and cook that for about three to four minutes until the mushrooms have released their water and the onions are nice and translucent. And then I just take about a cup and a quarter of the oat milk that I purchased. Make sure it's unflavored <laughs> because I gr did grab the vanilla flavored oat milk because that's what we normally purchase and then had to run back to switch it out because I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm using that for a recipe. I don't need that. So I add quarter, one quarter, one and one quarter cup of oat, oat milk and then add a quarter cup of flour. And then I just whisk it until it gets nice and glossy. I leave the heat on at this point and then once it starts to cook up nice and the flour is all kind of incorporated, I go ahead and turn the heat off and just let it sit and it will thicken really, really nicely. It'll get super glossy, super thick, and it's really flavorful. You can add a bunch more seasonings to this if you'd like, but I think it's perfect with a mashed potato that also has the skins. I'd love to hear down below, what are you thankful for this year? I feel like as I get older, I get more sentimental about things that I'm thankful for. And this is actually the first year for us that we don't have a pet on Thanksgiving because both of our pets passed away in the past couple years. And we had Levi last year, Marcus had passed away the following year. So it feels kind of weird. It's the first time in our marriage we don't have a pet for the holidays. But when it comes to being thankful for things, I'm very, very simple. I'm thankful for good food, good friends, my wonderful marriage to my husband, Joe. I'm thankful for our health. And I'm also thankful for a good night's sleep. I tell you guys all the time, I get up very early in the morning. I was getting up at 3.45, now I get up at 4.15. 
cheers to 30 more minutes of sleep. But I'm also very, very thankful that Helix decided to sponsor today's video and I am pumped to share with you the amazing deal that they have for you, my viewers. As you know, I get up very early, so does my husband, and we have wanted a new mattress for years. We're both side sleepers. He is specifically someone who needs a very soft bed. And unfortunately, last time I ordered us a bed, I didn't order the appropriate one because there wasn't a sleep quiz. And Helix actually has a sleep quiz that you and your partner can take to figure out which mattress is best for you. Everyone's different and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Personally, I'm a side sleeper, so is my husband. He prefers a really soft, squishy bed. Like I said, I can go with anything, but spending a few nights on this Helix mattress has been a game changer. I always just assumed I was supposed to wake up with lower back pain because I was old. Based on our quiz results, Helix matched us with the Helix Sunset Lux mattress. And after sleeping on it for a few nights, I'm gonna tell you they matched us correctly. I thought lower back pain was a thing I had to have because I was getting old. Turns out I was on the wrong mattress. And if it makes you nervous to purchase something that you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial. So you get more than three months to make sure you actually love it. Helix mattresses actually have a 10 year warranty and they offer financial options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix Sleep makes custom mattresses and bedding that is customized to fit your needs. For my husband who is a side sleeper, a soft, luxurious mattress is the best thing. Now I'm someone personally who could literally sleep on the floor, but your girl likes a big cloud to sleep on too. The best part is Helix actually delivers free to the US directly to your door. As you can see, our mattress came in a box and we just pulled up the stairs, plopped it on our bed, cut it out, and it was ready to go. We love our Helix and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, I would check out Helix. You can click the link in the description box or go to helixsleep.com slash flourishing Miranda and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus free two pillows. Huge thank you again for Helix for sponsoring today's video. Again, I need to hear down below, what are you thankful for? Let's get back to the cookie. I tried to come up with some different side options this year that were Thanksgiving-ish, but more fall forward and just different because I feel like a lot of times one of the things about Thanksgiving that we all love is it's nostalgic and sentimental and we fix the same things. I will link my Thanksgiving dinner video down below from last year. I spent $25 on a full dinner. Check it out. You'll have a bunch of new recipes. I talk about what things are nostalgic, what things are comfortable for us. But this year I decided to share different things. I will include a few of the recipes that I shared in last year's video in our Thanksgiving this year because they're traditions, they're staples, but also I like trying new things. So this is a roasted carrot and Brussels sprout in a maple balsamic Dijon sauce. And this is actually inspired from a green chef meal that we had about a month or two ago. It was a sheet pan meal and we served it with rice and it was so good. And I love being inspired by other dishes and seeing what I can come up with. So I just did uh, about a pound of Brussels sprouts and about a pound of carrots. I also was in my fridge getting out the sauces and seasonings and found we had a shallot that really needed used up. So I chopped that up, put it in there, and then did about two tablespoons of maple syrup. I just had a little packet. So I added that about three tablespoons of garlic because hi, garlic goes in everything. <laughs> a little bit of salt, about three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and about a heaping tablespoon, which equaled about two to three tablespoons of Dijon. Mix it all up, put it in the oven, 425 for about 30 minutes. It's nice and roasty and beautiful. I just feel like it's a different kind of side. It's Thanksgiving enough. I think it goes really, really well with all the flavors that I was making here today. And I hope you give this one a try. To 
to the desserts, I decided to try something new this year and do a blackberry cranberry cobbler. And I could have totally made this one gluten-free if I wasn't in my kitchen mode and just like going for it. But I had the regular flour sitting out, so that's just what I added. Anyways, add some butter and about a cup of plant milk to a bowl, and then add blackberries, vanilla, cinnamon, a cup of flour, and then a cranberry sauce, which I made because you're probably gonna have cranberry sauce anyways. So I figured why not include it in a dessert because some people like cranberry sauce and some people don't. I feel like it's really, really good both ways. I like it and you can also add orange to it if you want to. Ooh, this would have been really good. I should have grabbed an orange at the store and added like a juice of an orange, but I wanted to do something different. This would be really, really good with a plant-based whipped cream on top. I just feel like I know there's a lot of pies happening in Thanksgiving, but this is more of like a cakey cobbler. And I thought it would be just really good and really different. And even though it wasn't gluten-free, I did try a little bit of it and it was so good. <laughs> so definitely you could swap flowers and make it gluten-free. I was going to do that, but like I said, I was kind of in my kitchen mode and didn't get to it. So these cranberries are super simple. I'll show you how I made them here in a second. Just a traditional cranberry method over the stove top, but I used a lot less sugar because I don't like them super sweet. Just enough sweetness to kind of take the tartness out. And like I said, I should have added the zest of an orange because that would have been so good. I tried to do like a swirl effect to the top of this. Didn't really go as planned, but still looked really beautiful and super festive because look at that color. So pretty. But anyways, I also made some extra cranberries because I like that on the side. And these cranberries also went really good with the Brussels sprouts and carrots. So I went ahead, rinsed the cranberries and added one and one quarter cups water to one bag. And I believe it was a one pound bag of cranberries and then a quarter cup of sugar. A regular recipe usually calls for one cup of sugar, but that's a lot in my opinion. But you can add more or less if you'd like to. You can also add cinnamon and lemon and orange or whatever you'd like. I just did something really, really simple. You cook it for 10 minutes, take it off the stove top, and it's like a little gelatinous. Oh, it's so good. All right, I made this pumpkin pie last year. It's a crustless, gluten-free, vegan pumpkin pie. It was a huge hit. I made it for Thanksgiving. I made it the week after Thanksgiving. I made it the next week, and I also made it for Christmas. So you're gonna need three quarters cup of cornstarch, a little bit of cinnamon, some salt and vanilla, a can of full fat coconut milk and a can of pumpkin and that's it. And if you don't have pumpkin, oh, excuse me, you also need either maple syrup or agave, just like three or four tablespoons just to make it sweet. But I don't think I added that last year. Anyways, if you don't have canned pumpkin, you could definitely add sweet potato and it would be just as good. Cause I know my friends, I believe over in the UK, cause they always get a comment on it, don't have canned pumpkin. So you can definitely just use sweet potato instead. Mix it up and then go ahead and put it in your oven in a pie dish. And I would definitely spray it with a little bit of cooking spray so it doesn't stick. Pop in the oven for 45 to 60 minutes until the center is baked and you're good to go. This pie is so good. You're gonna wanna make two or three of these, <laughs> chill them and then eat them for breakfast. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Okay, while we're finishing up this pie, which this should be the very first thing you make, it is so delicious. Like I said, chill it, serve it with some coconut whip. So good. I also overbake mine a little bit. I will have the recipe down below. But let's talk prices. So here's my little grocery haul. You probably saw this in the intro. I spent $39.47 total. Breaking it down, the rolls and garlic butter cost me about $6. Potatoes and gravy was about $6. That's for five pounds of potatoes, by the way. Uh, the maple balsamic veggies cost me $4. The cranberry blackberry cobbler cost me $6. And the pumpkin pie, roughly $6. But this is including all of the ingredients. I obviously had things left over because I didn't use every speck of ingredient I had. But total, I made all of these meals for $39.47, which I think is pretty spectacular given all the food I have. It's time to clean up. So the reason I add these into my videos is because I think it's super important 
and valuable to share with you this is real life. As we know, when you are hosting Thanksgiving or any holiday or any birthday or any get together, the majority of the work is not just making the food. That might be the fun part or it might be the not so fun part. I don't know, just depending on who you are. But I try to share that you can have joy in every aspect when you are in your kitchen. For me, I really love cutting and chopping and mixing and making food. But I also have really learned to love the cleanup process because it's part of it. And every single time I film a video, my kitchen is a disaster. Every single time we have a get together or we host a party or anything, <laughs> my kitchen is an explosion. But the aftermath is that I have this really delicious food and I am able to celebrate with my friends and my family. And I just think it's really valuable to share this part and also I'm putting these dinner rolls away in like Ziploc baggies so my husband can uh, take them to work with him. And they smelled so good. I'm <laughs> coming up to share with you like, look how squishy they are. The bottoms are a little brown. The tops are a little yellow. They smell so good. <laughs> Anyways, but part of hosting is the cleanup. And I like sharing this with you guys. I personally love cleaning videos. I get asked all the time when I'm gonna post another cleaning video on my other channel, I don't know. <laughs> I did start a cleaning channel and I kept up with it for like three or four months, but I've just had a hard time keeping up with life in general. <laughs> I, I did share with you guys, my husband did have a softball accident a couple nights ago. He's on a men's league. He took a line drive right to the face. Uh, he was playing third base um, and yeah, it was, I'm so glad I was at the game because I would not want to get that phone call, but it was, it was a little bit hectic for a couple hours. So first I was not paying attention. I know bad wife, but I was really tired. I had been at work since 5.30. It was 8.30 at night. I said I would go to the game because I had to, like the night off. I got home at like seven. I was like, yeah, I'll come to the game. There was actually two games. I watched the first game diligently and then the second game I got really tired and I think it was like the third or fourth inning where this happened he took a line drive like I said right to the base and I saw him fall but I didn't see the ball hit him which I'm actually really grateful for um and then one of his teammates was like hey he just got hit and I was like I know I saw the fall so I rushed out to the field and saw his face and was like oh my gosh <laughs> like I'm not gonna post any pictures of it but he had a massive hole in his chin so I am very, very fortunate that I have a really good personal friend who's a plastic surgeon here in Vegas, and I called him. That was my first call. I know, you're probably thinking, wow, bad wife, you didn't even call the medics. But I called him, and I was like, what do I do? And his first concern was, you know, does he have any breaks in his jaw? Like, that's our main concern, not about the skin. I sent him a picture, and then the lady that was manning the field actually called the medic for us. And my friend actually met us at the hospital, and I'm so, so thankful that he did. He actually um, helped my husband out. There was obviously a resident on staff, but I trusted my friend so much more than the person on staff. But he looked at the x-rays, was like, wow, this is the first time ever in my career that I have seen an injury like this from a baseball, softball incident that didn't even have a hairline fracture which was crazy. So they washed him up. <laughs> they stitched him up 37 stitches later. Uh, they got the muscle back together. They got the skin back together. He wasn't missing any skin, which is great. That can also happen in that kind of um, velocity of a hit. But yeah, we spent the night at the ER. Uh, my husband's pretty swollen. Uh, he was in this clip with the Helix mattress. I don't know if anybody noticed, but in case you did, that's what's going on. Uh, he didn't have any nerve damage either. That was another concern. He does have some severe bruising to his nerves, and it'll probably take about six months to kind of get that all back. But yeah, there's a little life update for you while I'm cleaning. So if you're wondering why I'm not doing cleaning videos anymore on my other channel, it's because seems like every single week life keeps happening and I'm always like, okay, this will be the week that I keep up with it. And nope, something keeps happening and it doesn't, doesn't all pan out. But here you are, you're getting some cleaning action and I hope this motivates you in your own kitchen. You'll have to let me know down below. What are you doing today while you're watching this video? Are you cleaning? Are you cooking? Are you relaxing? Are you taking notes for Thanksgiving? Are you on the treadmill? Are you doing cardio? Are you out for a walk? 
I know a lot of you also walk and run on the treadmill while you watch me, so I'd love to hear what you're doing down below. But I always appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I was testing out some of the Thanksgiving recipes that we're gonna eat throughout the week ahead. And of course, cleaning up my kitchen because Thanksgiving is not just about making food. It's about family, it's about preparing the food, and there's always a huge mess left over and I always try to share real life with you. And I have a huge mess in my kitchen and I try to clean it up alongside you to motivate and inspire you so you don't feel so alone because that's real life. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next week in a brand new video. Bye-bye.